Iran has already enriched uranium to 60%, dangerously close to the 90% needed for a nuclear bomb. As per experts, Iran's stockpile could be enough for nine bombs if pushed further. Amid this, understanding how uranium goes from rock in the ground to the core of a nuclear weapon is the key to knowing how close we are to the next nuclear flashpoint. Let's break it down. Uranium starts as ore, buried deep in the earth. Major reserves are found in Australia, Kazakhstan, Russia, Canada and Niger. The ore is then mined either by digging open pits or underground tunnels. After that, trucks haul the raw rock to a mill. At the mill, the uranium ore is crushed and grounded into powder. Chemicals dissolve the uranium, separating it from the waste rock. The result? Uranium oxide concentrate, known as yellow cake. This yellow powder is about 80% uranium, much more concentrated than the original ore. But yellow cake is not ready for enrichment. It's sent to a conversion facility. Here, it's purified and combined with fluorine to make uranium hexafluoride, a compound that turns into gas at moderate temperatures. This gas is crucial for the next step, enrichment. Natural uranium is made up of two main types or isotopes, U-238 and U-235. Almost all of it, over 99%, is U-238. But the part that matters is U-235. But there is very little of it, less than 1%. So what do we do? You see, uranium-235 is the type that can easily split apart when hit by a slow-moving neutron. This splitting, called fission, releases a huge amount of energy very quickly. Other types of uranium don't split as easily, so they can't create the powerful chain reaction needed for a nuclear explosion. So, to use uranium in reactors or bombs, scientists need to increase the concentration of uranium-235 by separating it from uranium-238. This process is called enrichment. Enrichment increases the proportion of U-235. So how is the process of enrichment done? The uranium hexafluoride gas is fed into machines called centrifuges. Centrifuges spin at incredible speeds. The lighter uranium-235 molecules separate from the heavier uranium-238. This process is repeated in thousands of centrifuges, gradually raising the uranium-235 percentage. So how much percentage of enrichment levels do one need to make a nuclear bomb? There are three categories. First is low enriched uranium. This is about 3 to 5 percent of uranium-235. This uranium is mostly used in nuclear power reactors. Then we have highly enriched uranium. In this uranium, we have 20 percent or more uranium-235. This is much closer to weapons grade. And the third uranium which is needed to make a nuclear bomb is the uranium which has 90% or more uranium-235. But there is an interesting fact. Getting uranium up to 20% uranium-235 actually takes about 90% of the total work. But once you hit that 20% mark, Jumping the rest of the way to 90% enrichment to make a nuclear bomb is relatively quick. Now, how is this uranium stored? For civilian use, enriched uranium is made into fuel pellets for reactors. But for nuclear weapons, the highly enriched uranium is first 
turned into metal. This metal is carefully shaped into a solid core, usually a sphere. The uranium core is then surrounded by special explosives. When these explosives are set off, they squeeze the uranium core tightly, starting a chain reaction. This reaction releases a massive amount of energy all at once. The explosion of a nuclear bomb. Iran has enriched uranium to 60% uranium-235, a level far above what's needed for civilian power and alarmingly close to weapons grade. As per experts, with enough 60% uranium, Iran could further enrich it to 90% in a matter of weeks if it chose to do so. This is the heart of today's crisis. Israel fears Iran could break out and build a bomb before the world can react. The US has already launched military strikes to stop Iran from crossing that final line. Congratulations, President Trump. Your bold decision to target Iran's nuclear facilities with the awesome and righteous might of the United States will change history. In Operation Rising Lion, Israel has done truly amazing things. But in tonight's action against Iran's nuclear facilities, America has been truly unsurpassed. It has done what no other country on Earth could do. Our objective was the destruction of Iran's nuclear enrichment capacity and a stop to the nuclear threat posed by the world's number one state sponsor of terror. Tonight, I can report to the world that the strikes were a spectacular military success. Iran's key nuclear enrichment facilities have been completely and totally obliterated. Once a country masters uranium enrichment, the political stakes skyrocket. In 2025, with Iran's enrichment at 60 percent, the world faces a moment of truth. The difference between peace and war, maybe just a few centrifuge, spins away.